Hello and welcome to Tuscany, a region that is bursting with beauty and history. Her fertile hilly terrain is truly an Eden, giving birth to the very greatest of olives, wines and artists. One particular artist that was from this region was named Leonardo da Vinci. He studied this place endlessly, breaking ground in several different scientific disciplines as a result. And as we gaze upon these hills that fade through space to a misty blue, as Leonardo observed, I can think of few better places to discuss his greatest masterpiece, the Mona Lisa. So you've probably wondered about the Mona Lisa. Why is she such a big deal? Why do people care so much about her? Why do people from all over the world travel so far to see her in a crowded room in the Louvre? Well, hopefully through the next five things that I'm going to discuss here, your questions will be answered. So the first thing to consider about the Mona Lisa is that this is a painting by Leonardo da Vinci. I know, we've already discussed it, but it's important. He was the most respected painter that ever lived. Yet we only have about 14 paintings existing in the world completed by his hand. So the Mona Lisa is rare for that reason alone. What makes her rarer still is that she was painted in the last 20 years of Leonardo's life. This was considered to be the very height of his artistic powers. So for that reason alone, the Mona Lisa is right to be revered and respected. But it is true that we can say the same for three other paintings that exist in the world but none of those paintings were stolen. In 1911, an Italian employee at the Louvre named Vincenzo Perugia took the Mona Lisa off the wall and walked out. Then for two years, the world was deprived of this masterpiece before Perugia decided to ring up the Uffizi Gallery in Florence and attempt to sell it to them. You see, he was a patriot and felt that a rare masterpiece by a great Italian artist belonged in Italy. Let's be honest, he probably also thought he could make a few bob. The Uffizi told Perugia, yeah, sure mate, just tell us where you are and we'll go and pick up the painting. And then they sent the police to that address. Within two weeks, the Mona Lisa was back in the Louvre and Perugia was in prison. Another particularly irresistible characteristic of the Mona Lisa is her elusive nature. She is shrouded in mystery in fact, we don't even really know who the Mona Lisa is a painting of. There is some good evidence to suggest that Leonardo was painting a Florentine woman called Lisa Giocondo, and that her husband commissioned the work in 1503. Except for the fact that Leonardo gave this painting to Francis I of France in 1517. These contrasting, well-substantiated views have given rise to endless theories. One argues that this is a portrait of Leonardo's mother, painted from his memory of her. Another argues that this is a self-portrait by Leonardo of Leonardo and that he's transformed himself through paint to look like a woman. But a theory that I find particularly compelling argues that this was in fact a portrait of Lisa Giocondo and that was painted in 1503, but that Leonardo never gave it to her. Instead, he endlessly repainted the Mona Lisa throughout the entirety of his life until in 1517, his right hand became paralytic at which point he was in France and thought it could serve as a good gift to Francis of France. This theory does make a lot of sense. Leonardo studied optics throughout the entirety of his life. He was interested in the way that light struck bodies in space, and he concluded that there are infinite variations of shade between light and dark. So if you wanted to replicate nature in a painting, you would need infinite time to apply infinite variations of shade with the brush. Of course, this is impossible, but hopefully he thought that 15 years was about enough time. It's also worth noting that the Mona Lisa is far from being an ordinary portrait of a woman. In fact, she's a very strange one. And I'm gonna pick out two particularly strange elements of this painting. First of all, the horizon line is fractured. It is as though we see the Mona Lisa from two different viewpoints at the same time. Why has Leonardo done this? Really, it's impossible to say, but it does make the Mona Lisa look a bit more dynamic. Another strange feature is the famous enigmatic smile. Now, this is very strange. Most Renaissance portrait painters tried very hard to make their sitters look as miserable as possible. I suppose it made them appear a little bit more important. But apparently, Leonardo went to great lengths to make sure that 
the sitter of this painting was entertained whilst he painted her. It is said that he hired buffoons, comedians, and musicians to perform for her while she sat for this work. Finally, this is quite simply an extraordinarily brilliant painting. The Mona Lisa emerges from the background softly, gradually, somewhere between human and ghost. The detail is a testament to Leonardo's patience, every hair individually pronounced, the delicate transparency of the veil, the way light captures the folds of her drapery. The murky landscape of rocks, streams and mist is also sheer poetry. She seems to glow, effortlessly, yet intensely capturing our attention, and I don't think anyone in any painting has ever looked more like they are looking. It is almost disconcerting. Hope you enjoyed the video today, and if you did, please remember to like and subscribe. Also, there's more content coming out shortly, so stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching.